Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. We are scorching hot right now. If you haven't heard, you probably have. Uh, we crushed college football. An NFL of VIP ticket went 14-2-1. Top bets went 6-0-1. Oh, Bet of the day hit, parlay of the day hit. We even killed hockey picks. The hottest weekend of the year so far. Scorching hot, let's keep it going. Uh, we got NBA Wednesday here in this video. The Miami Heat are at Brooklyn to play the Nets. Let's go. Welcome to the Stewards. The Stewards. The Stewards. Get the shoes. All right, like I said, we got heat at Nets. Brooklyn's laying five points at home here, coming off that win against Washington. Usually, just like the last video, I usually put the bets and money tracking here, um, but I'm recording this on Tuesday night, so I don't have that information yet. What I'm gonna do is tweet it out, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Check it out on Twitter if you're interested in that money tracking. So let's cap this game. If you subscribe to this channel, you already know the first step. We're running the numbers through the spreadsheet. According to the analytics, the line for this game should be Brooklyn minus 5.32. This tells us absolutely nothing because that's exactly where the books have it moving right along. So let's run through a quick breakdown of this game. And honestly, I'm starting with Bruce Brown. I know that sounds a little weird breaking down a Nets game. We're talking Bruce Brown first, but this dude gets the first start of the season in the Washington game the other night. Go six or 10 from the floor, 14 points or 16 points, something like that. Played great. But more importantly is what Bruce Brown did on defense. Check this out. So he's a 6'4 guard. He's a big physical guard. Um, he spent most, he, was, he played 30 minutes. That whole time was switching off between Dinwiddie and Bradley Beal. Look at these numbers here. So Dinwiddie and Bradley Beal started the game a combined one for eight. They finished, Beal was eight for 22 from the floor, three of 13 for three. Dinwiddie, three of 13 from the floor. Yo, this dude did his job on the defensive end. And that's huge in this matchup against the Heat because you know the Heat love, they really need to get their shooters going the Heat. They're having a bad year shooting the ball from outside. And you know what they love to do is that little given screen. I don't even know what it's called. When the guy like hands it to someone coming around and then sets the screen. There's a name for it. I, <laughs> I forget what it is. But they love to do that with Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero. Now, if Bruce Brown's playing the kind of defense he played the other night in this game, he will be running through those screens, disrupting the rhythm on the outside, which could throw the whole Miami offense off. You know, they like to send Butler inside. They like to give Adebayo looks inside as well, but the Heat do not want to have to rely on that. As far as the Heat defense matching up against Brooklyn's offense, I actually think they match up pretty well. Uh, Miami second in the NBA in three-point defense, three-point percentage allowed. So they play good defense on the perimeter, which means the Nets are going to have to get physical and go inside. But there is a kicker there because Miami also leads the league in fouls. <laughs> they commit the most fouls in the NBA this, so far this year. So you got Kevin Durant and James Harden entering the block off the dribble, right? These are two of the best, most crafty players at getting foul calls. And we all hate it. We all talk shit to the TV when we see it. But the truth is, you have to acknowledge they're really good at it. So you got a team that fouls a lot, um, gonna be forcing these two guys inside, could result in a lot of free throws. And also, should also mention, uh, Durant and Harden, they are also very good free throw shooters. So who are we betting? And I know everyone thinks I'm probably gonna go with Miami. Miami plus five seems like it might be the sharp pick here. But honestly, with Bruce Brown back, healthy, playing that kind of defense on the perimeter, I think that solidifies the entire Brooklyn defense. And I think, I know the Nets got off to a rocky start, but I think Brooklyn's about to go on a run, man. I'm gonna lay the five points. Give me Brooklyn minus five. Definitely going on the final ticket, and I'm definitely putting it in my top bets. I like this bet here. I'm also gonna play the under at 218. That one probably will not make the final ticket, but I do like it. I will be betting it personally. Final ticket be posted on kylecrums.com at five o'clock p.m. Eastern time. It'll have my bet of the day. Uh, my top bets labeled one through six or seven, however many I choose. Every single bet I'm making for the entire day and the parlay of the day, all on one big sheet posted on kylecrums.com, five o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Also, if there's any crazy last minute changes, injury updates, money shifts, line movement, anything like that, I will definitely put it on my Twitter, Instagram story, and Facebook. So make sure you check one of those three platforms before you place your bets. We are scorching hot right now and let's stay that way. NBA Wednesday, let's make some money. I'll talk to you on Twitter.